Ladybird Readers, Frankenstein. Contents, Characters, Page 5. The Arctic, Page 6. The Experiment, Page 10. The Day After, Page 14. William and Justine. Page 18. Frankenstein meets his creature. Page 23. The creature's first months. Page 27. Revenge. Page 30. The creature's wife. Page 34. Henry Clerval. Page 39. The Wedding Night, page 42. The End, page 46. Activities, page 50. Project, page 62. Glossary, page 63. Characters, Victor Frankenstein. Frankenstein's creature, also called the monster. Victor's father and mother. Elizabeth. Justine. The family in the cottage. Ladybird readers. Frankenstein. Chapter 1. The Arctic. My name is Victor Frankenstein, and I'm from Geneva in Switzerland. A sailor called Captain Walton was exploring the Arctic Sea, looking for a way to the North Pole. One night, he and his men found me lying on a broken sled on a large piece of ice in the sea. I was very thin and very tired. What are you doing here? They asked me, as they helped me on to the ship. I'm following someone, I replied. I must find him. We saw an enormous man with dark hair walking on the ice last night said Captain Walton. When I was alone with Captain Walton, I told him my story. I was very happy as a child. When I was five years old, my parents adopted a little girl called Elizabeth, who was my age. Some years later, my parents had another boy, my brother, William. When I was 17, I decided to study at a university in Germany with my best friend, Henry Clerval. Just when I was ready to leave, my mother suddenly became ill. Before she died, she said, Promise me you will marry Elizabeth. Ladybird Readers, Frankenstein, Chapter 2, The Experiment It was difficult to study at university because I couldn't forget the death of my mother, and every day I felt so sad. Then I started going to chemistry lessons. The teacher talked about the wonderful things possible with modern science. I started to ask myself, could I create life? I began collecting parts of dead bodies and doing experiments in a small laboratory next to my bedroom. I was going to make a man.
I forgot my family and worked hard for two years. Then, one night in November, I was ready to start my experiment. I turned a wheel, and slowly one eye opened. The creature started to breathe, but it was horrible. He had yellow skin and straight black hair. I wanted to create something beautiful, but this was a monster. I ran out of the laboratory into my bedroom. I lay on the bed, but it was difficult to sleep, of course. When I finally slept, I had terrible dreams. I thought Elizabeth was dead. Then, suddenly, I woke up and saw something awful. Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Chapter 3 The Day After The monster was standing in the door, looking at me. He was enormous, over two meters tall. His mouth opened and he made some sounds, but I couldn't understand them. I was terrified and ran downstairs. I walked around the streets all night, too frightened to return to my rooms. In the morning, while I was walking around, I heard a voice which I knew. Victor, how are you? It was my friend, Henry Clerval. I've just returned from Geneva. Your father told me to look for you. He explained that my family were worried because I didn't write to them. I went with Henry to my rooms, but I told him to wait downstairs. I was terrified that the monster was still upstairs. He wasn't there, but I fainted with fear and exhaustion. I was ill for months. When I was better, I received a letter with some terrible news from my father. My little brother William was dead. He was found in the countryside with bruises around his neck. I hurried back to Geneva. Before going to my parents' house, I went to see the place where William's body was found. When I arrived, there was an awful storm, and in a flash of lightning, I saw something enormous in the trees. The monster was watching me. Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Chapter 4 William and Justine When I saw the monster, I ran away as fast as I could. He killed William, I thought, and I suddenly felt very afraid. I ran to my parents' house and my father explained what happened. We were walking in the forest, he said. William went to play, but he didn't return. We searched for him all night. In the morning, we found him with bruises around his neck. He was dead. The police have arrested our dear Justine, my father continued. She's worked for us since she was twelve years old. They discovered a locket 
in Justine's pocket. The locket belonged to William. It had a picture of his mother inside. But I can't believe Justine killed him. At the trial, Justine said that she too was looking for William that night. I slept in a farm building for a few hours because I was tired, she said. I can't explain why the locket was in my pocket. I was sure that Justine was telling the truth, but I couldn't tell the judge about the monster. Elizabeth said good things about Justine, but the judge said she was guilty. She was executed the next day. Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Chapter 5 Frankenstein Meets His Creature I felt guilty for the deaths of William and Justine. They died because of my terrible experiment, because of my monster, but I couldn't say anything to anybody. They will never believe my story, I thought. I became more ill, and my family persuaded me to rest in the mountains. One day, while I was walking, I saw something running quickly across the ice. It was the monster. What do you want? I shouted angrily. You've already killed my brother! Everybody hates me, Frankenstein, he said. I'm the unhappiest creature in the world. You created me, but you don't love me. Why? I regret creating you, I shouted. Now I only want to kill you. I'm going to ask you something, the monster said. If you promise to do it, I won't hurt your family. If not, I will kill you all. Now, follow me, and I shall tell you my story. I followed the monster to a hut. We sat down by a fire, and he began to speak. Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Chapter 6 The Creature's First Months After I ran away from your laboratory, I hid in a forest, the creature said. I ate nuts and fruit and drank water from the rivers, but it wasn't enough. I needed more food. In a village, I saw vegetables in the gardens, and milk and bread on the tables in the cottages, he continued. I liked it there, but when the people saw me, they screamed and threw stones at me. The creature looked sad. Finally, I found an empty hut and stayed there, he said. It was near a cottage where an old man lived with his son and daughter. They were poor, but they were good people. I used to hide outside the little house and listen to them talking, laughing, and singing songs. That's how I learned to speak. One day, 
When the old man was alone, I went inside. I wanted to be his friend, and I brought him flowers. He was blind, so he wasn't frightened. He was kind to me, but when his children came home and saw me, they called me a monster and hit me with sticks. Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Chapter 7 Revenge I was still holding the flowers when I ran from the hut and hid in the forest. The creature continued. I sat down by a lake and saw my face in the water. I saw how ugly I was. Later, I went back to the cottage, but there was no one there. I was angry and sad, so I burned it. When I left your laboratory, I was wearing your coat. Your diary was in a pocket, and I taught myself to read. I read about your experiment and how you made me. Then I read that your home was in Geneva. I wanted revenge. In a forest outside Geneva, I found a boy. He screamed when he saw me. When I held him, he shouted, Let me go, you ugly monster. I'll call my father, Mr. Frankenstein. I put my hands around the boy's neck, and he stopped shouting. Then I saw a picture of a beautiful woman in a locket around his neck. Later, when I found a woman sleeping in a farm building, I put the locket in her clothes so that she looked guilty. I have done some terrible things. I asked you to promise to do something, Frankenstein. Will you? Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Chapter 8 The Creature's Wife I am sad and alone, said the creature. Make me a wife. She must be as ugly as I am. Someone who won't be afraid of me. Someone who'll love me. If you do this, we'll go and live far away. You'll never see us again, I promise. I agreed. Remember, I'll watch you all the time, said the monster. Later, at home, my father asked, Do you remember your promise to your mother, Victor, to marry Elizabeth? Of course, I said. Elizabeth was now a very beautiful woman, and I wanted to marry her. But I knew I had to make a female monster first. I couldn't work at home, so I told my father I needed another holiday for my health. I went to Scotland with Henry Clerval. He stayed in a town on the coast, and I went to an island, where I started my terrible work. I was worried all the time. 
What will happen if these two monsters have children? I thought. One night, I saw the monster's face at the window, smiling. I couldn't continue, so I tore the body on the table into pieces. The monster screamed, "You'll regret this! I'll see you on your wedding night!" Then, he ran away. Ladybird readers, Frankenstein, Chapter Nine, Henry Clerval. I was terrified by what the monster said. I had to return to Elizabeth in Geneva. She might be in danger. I got into a boat and sailed immediately to the town on the coast where I left Henry. When I arrived, I went immediately to where Henry was staying. He was lying on the bed, but he wasn't moving. I saw bruises on his neck. He was dead. I screamed. When the police arrived, they found me alone with the body. They arrested me. I fainted with shock, and for days I couldn't speak. The police found letters from home in my pocket, and wrote to my father, who soon arrived. At the trial. The judge said that there was no reason for me to kill Henry, and that he died before I arrived in his room. This proved that I was innocent. My father took me home, and Elizabeth kissed me happily. Everyone was preparing for the wedding. But I remembered the monster's last words. I needed to be ready. I always carried a gun with me. Lady Bird readers, Frankenstein, Chapter Ten, The Wedding Night. On our wedding day. I hid my worry and fear. I smiled at everyone, but I couldn't forget the monster's words. That evening, I was too worried to stay with Elizabeth. I told her to go to bed, and I locked the door. I started checking every room in the house. Suddenly. I heard Elizabeth screaming. I ran to the bedroom, but I was too late. Elizabeth was lying dead on the bed. The bruises from the monster's hands were around her neck. The monster was at the window. He pointed at Elizabeth's body. And laughed. I reached for my gun, but he was already running away. Soon after this, my father died of shock. I was now completely alone. William, Justine, Henry, Elizabeth, and my father were all dead. Because of my terrible experiment, now I wanted revenge. I'll find the monster and kill him. I promised myself. Before starting my search, I went to the cemetery where William, Elizabeth, and my father were buried. As I was kneeling. I heard the monster laugh. 
Everyone you love is dead, he said. Now I am happy. Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Chapter 11 The End I followed the monster for months across land and sea, but always going north. Sometimes people gave me news of him. One day I saw a message on a tree from the monster. Follow me to the North Pole, where the ice and cold will be terrible for you, but not for me. Yesterday, I saw him, I told Captain Walton. But the ice between us broke, and now I'm here with you. I felt weak as I finished my story. I was dying. My last words to Captain Walton were, If he comes here, please kill him. The next day, Captain Walton found the creature standing over Frankenstein's body and speaking to it. Frankenstein, it's too late to ask you to forgive me, the creature said. You hated me, but I hate myself more. I didn't want to kill anyone. I wanted to be good. I only became bad because people hated me and hurt me. But I won't kill any more people. Then he jumped down from the ship and disappeared into the ice and snow. Ladybird Readers Frankenstein Gloucester